Hi, I'm Bill Keeter. Welcome to this brief presentation about handling failure data problems and availability workbench. Have you ever been working on an AVSIM model or an RCM cost project and lack the hard data you need to populate a failure model? This presentation discusses operating facilities data challenges and what to do when you know little or nothing about the failures. There are many reasons for not having data about system failures. Primary challenges faced in operating facilities are not knowing when failures have occurred, not knowing when an item entered service, not knowing the failure mode of the failures, not having experienced any failures, and not knowing whether an item was replaced after an inspection. Ybase is a statistical method that is used to take advantage of having some knowledge about failures. In its purest form, it is applied using a priori or prior knowledge about the shape of a failure. It can be applied when there has only been one failure or when no failures have occurred. YBase has many uses. In this presentation, we will use it to help create failure distributions when we have unknown failure times. In this example, we will look at a shipping company with six large freighters. Ships will be disabled and unable to proceed on their journey if a propulsion shaft fails in service. They have not experienced any failures in the fleet, but they know the Weibull shape factor based on information from the shaft manufacturer about failures in other fleets. In this example, we have entered the operating time for each freighter as the items in a Weibull set called propulsion shafts. Note that each item is entered as a suspension because none have failed. Suspensions are used to indicate that an item has either never failed or has not failed for the failure mode under study. We will then use the Weibull shape factor supplied by the shaft supplier to help develop the estimated characteristic life for the shafts. So we give this an OK. We pick Y bays as our method out of the methods that we see up here in our menu. So we've got Y bays picked. We then tell it we want to automatically calculate parameters. Click calculate automatically. And when it comes up and says enter the beta parameter, we will put in the 4.5 provided by the manufacturer. Once we do that, then we will get the failure shape that we see here on the screen. And we also get probabilities of failure at the B10 life, the B15 life, and the B20 life. So we can see what's happening at given times, especially those B lives, if we're interested in those. In the next example problem, we will look at how to calculate the probability of failure of each single shaft. The demonstration showed that the propulsion shafts have a characteristic life of 96,080 hours with a shape factor of beta of 4.5. We can now use the P0 setting in YBase to see the cumulative probability of each in-service shaft failure. Ship 3 has nearly a 50% probability of failure. That is, the next time it sets sail, it has a 50-50 chance of completing its voyage. The P analysis option for the YBO model is used to determine the cumulative probability of an item's failure at a given time in service. Simply enter the time of interest in the P option and run the analysis. The cumulative probability of failure at that time is shown on the right-hand side of the plot. Let's enter the operating time of 87,600 hours in P and see what we get. So we simply go to our analysis options by double-clicking on the propulsion shaft, going to the analysis options and entering 87,600. We'll click OK. Tell it we want to automatically run the parameters and enter 4.5 as the beta value that we were given before. Once we run that, we can see that the cumulative probability of failure over here on the right is 48.3 or nearly 50%, which means that this ship has a 50-50 chance of completing its next voyage successfully. So as we saw in the demo, 
Unit number three has a 48.3% cumulative probability by its time in service. So we can go individually and look at each one of these to determine the cumulative probability of failure based on its time in service. Maintenance organizations frequently do not have the hard data to populate their failure models in availability workbench. I have found through many years of service that people in the organization have enough anecdotal information to make reasonable approximations if we ask them the right questions. We can start by asking how many failures have occurred. And what we want to do is make sure we look over some long period of time, like five years or 10 years. One of the problems that we get when we don't ask the question that way is that people tend to remember the most recent failures they've seen. So they'll be looking at other equipment and talk about it as the one that fails. So we want to make sure we ask over a period of time. We may be interested in what happened in the last year, or we may be interested in when the last time this failure occurred. So then after that, we can ask some other questions about, well, how does this failure happen? If we work on it today, do we know that it's going to last for a while or do we bring in extra people and stage parts or do other things to let people know we just worked on it because we know in the past we've suffered failures right away. That can mean that you're having infant failures and we need to try to find out why. If you don't know when it might fail, it doesn't really happen soon, but you don't know if it's going to be uh, two years, four years, three years, five years. You don't really have an idea when it's going to occur. It might be a random occurrence. So what you're looking at is failures due to random cause, and those will have a beta of around one. Now, if we have some idea that it will last a while into the future, but if it goes too long, we'll start seeing more failures. We know that indicates to us there's a wear out and we'll want to try to come up with a failure shape that makes sense for that wear out. And we can use the Ybase module to help us do that. Let's add a data set called Playtime. And we'll simulate that we've had two failures over the last 10 years, which gives us a mean time to failure five years. We'll then use the Ybase module with manual calculation to help determine a reasonable shape factor. So let's put in 43,800 for the item's time to failure. So we've had two in 10 years. And then we'll go select Ybase as our method and use set distribution parameters manually to help us get an idea of what the failure might look like. So we've got our 43,800 in there. We'll put 43,800 here. And then we'll start messing with our Y base. This is when we'll interview the people in the plant. So we'll start asking about when the failures might have occurred. And two or three of them agree, you know, uh, when we worked on this, the couple of times we worked on it, the first time we worked on it, it didn't last very long. The second failure came soon after that. So we may drive this beta value down to below one to get some idea of what that might look like. It might be Closer to 0.7, but that says that we start out with a little bit of a failure probability, but we still get some decent life out of them. The 20% probability failure point is still only 5,400 hours or so. So we can tell that uh, that's not too bad, right? But if it was worse, we'll drive this beta down some more, down below a half. And we can see that the bee life drops substantially. So as we're talking to people and we start finding out more, 
Then we'll have somebody that maybe that's not the conversation. Maybe they didn't fail early, but they say, you know, um, we didn't get you know, one of them failed in like four years. And then another one was in, in there for six years or so. We were just not sure about that one. Well, they may have failed due to random cause. So we'll put a one in this beta value and we'll get this random failure shape. So we're getting some ideas about, how this failure occurs. And finally they say, well, you know what? If it's in there for four years, we know that over the fourth year up to the fifth year, we start getting increasing failures. So we might put a beta value of four in there, 4.5 or something like that. So that we see that even here as early as 13,000 hours or so, we start getting a little bit of probability of failure. Uh, the B10 life is... 28,000 hours, which is roughly half of the 43,800. Not exactly, but roughly, right? And the B15 is 29 and the B20 is 31, right? So uh, we got a, a good idea that, yeah, that could go at least three years or so before we get too worried about it. Or we may say it goes longer or goes less. The whole idea here is that you can use this failure rate graph as part of your conversation with the people you're working with to help figure out what that Weibull shape might be or what's a reasonable approximation of the Weibull shape as you go forward with your analysis. Will it be exactly correct? No, but it'll be better than just giving it a mean time to failure. In this presentation, we discussed the basic characteristics of reliability data and how using Ybase can help create reasonable approximations of an item's characteristic life and failure behavior. Thank you for attending this webinar. Please get in touch with Brett Peterson at bpeterson at isograph.com or visit www.isograph.com for more information about Availability Workbench and the other reliability analytics and management products available from Isograph.